This is Field Communications in Philadelphia. Kim Novak stars as a gorgeous young woman who will stop at nothing to get what she wants in the amorous adventures of Maul Flanders. Tonight's 8 o'clock movie on Channel 48. So where is the evidence that Raven Swift is unfit to keep her own child? Where is the proof that she has neglected, abused, or in any way mistreated Jameson Swift? Where are the complaints from the neighbors suggesting that she's been anything but a loving mother? Where is the eyewitness who can state that Jameson Swift has received anything but the very best of care? Now let me remind you, Your Honor, there was only one truly qualified witness to the well-being of this child and whose future you will decide. Perhaps the most respected social welfare worker in all of Monticello, Mrs. Benita Thomas, who has objectively reported to this court that Jameson Swift is a healthy, happy, and well-treated little boy. My God. And in conclusion, it's Raven's letter. If the uh, court will permit me one small sentimental remark, Your Honor, it has been said that because God could not be everywhere at once, that he created mothers. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Mr. Nelson, do you wish to make your closing remarks now? Uh, clear. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, uh, my name is Michael Carr. I'm uh, an associate representing Mr. Swift. Uh, Mr. Carr is very well known to this court. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, with the court's indulgence, uh, we would like to ask for a uh, ten-minute recess. Well, for what purpose, Mr. Carr? Well, some uh, pertinent information has just come to my attention, and I would like the opportunity to discuss it with my client and my colleague. Objection, Your Honor. I'm sure you'll agree we've already had enough delaying tactics. Uh, it is quite important, Your Honor. I assure you that it will have a great deal of bearing on the decision in this case. Well, very well, Mr. Carr. Your Honor, Mr. Nelson has already rested the case for his client. Yeah, but Mr. Carr hasn't the benefit of these proceedings, having heard them, Mr. Rutledge. No, I think we can survive a uh, ten-minute delay. The court is still in session. All rise. <clears throat> Mike, what's going on here, huh? Take a look at this, Cliff. This is a letter. This is Raven's letter. What'd you find? What'd you, what hat you pull this out of? I pulled it out of your magazine. I, I didn't know I had the letter, really. I didn't. Yeah, but you stole the magazine from Elliot Dorn's office, didn't you? Yeah, but the guy is dead. What's he gonna do with a magazine like that? Huh? Well, apparently what he did with it was hide Raven's letter in it. And now that we've got it, we've got to use it. <laughs> Edge of Night is brought to you by Tide. Women who count on cleaning put their trust in Tide. And by Dawn, the dishwashing liquid that takes grease out of your way. Great dinner, Herb. I love the fish. It was steak. And the greasy mess it left. Ugh. Use the Dawn, Herb. Dawn will handle that grease. Dawn, huh? Here's why. Half a cup of grease added to dishwater. Dawn breaks up grease, surrounds it, takes grease out of your way, helps keep it from settling back on your dishes. Everything came out great. Dishes, pots, pans, even my hands don't feel greasy. With Dawn, I'll do dinner anytime. Give me a break. Dawn takes grease out of your way. Beautiful. Here's a little housewarming gift. Oh, I'll get the glasses. Uh, use these. <laughs> Puritan oil. Puritan's part of our diet to fight cholesterol. And it makes food taste great. I always use corn oil. Puritan has more polyunsaturates than corn oil. It also looks lighter. It tastes lighter. You have excellent taste and gifts. <laughs> Puritan, a delicious part of your diet to fight cholesterol. 
I can't believe this. You mean I had the letter all the time in that magazine? I think we can convince Judge Lewis this evidence is important enough to warrant reopening the case. Look, I don't know. You know, if Rutledge wants to be a sticker on this, he could say we've closed our case already. We can't introduce any new evidence. Don't think that's going to be a problem. Judge Lewis is a fair man. When he knows what we have, he's going to give us permission. I think so, too. And I've known him for a long time. Well, look, why don't you handle the case, then? He'll listen to you before he'll listen to me. Is that all right with you, Logan? It's fine with me. Okay. All right. <laughs> Be seated. Well, Mr. Carr, have you had enough time to discuss this situation with your colleagues? Yes, Your Honor. And we would ask further the court's indulgence. We would like to ask for a reopening of the trial for Mr. Swift. Your Honor, I object in the strongest possible terms to the antics of Mr. Swift's attorneys. This is the second time this painful decision has been delayed. It is most unfair to both the mother and the baby. Your Honor, if we may approach the bench to discuss the nature of this new evidence, I think the court will understand its importance to the case. Very well, Mr. Carr, please step up to the bench. Uh, you too, Mr. Rutledge. I have no idea, but I'm sure he knows what he's doing. All right, all right, gentlemen. Now, this court will permit these proceedings to resume, and Mr. Rutledge will be allowed to make still another closing statement at the conclusion, if he so desires. So, Mr. Carr, what's your pleasure? Your Honor, we would like to recall a previous witness, Raven Swift. Do I have to? Why should I testify against myself? Uh, Mrs. Swift, uh, would you kindly take the stand? Your Honor, I've already given a testimony. Why do I have to subject myself to their abuse? Now, these are not criminal proceedings, Mrs. Swift. The immunity role does not apply. We are merely trying to get at all the facts needed for my decision. Uh, please remember that you're still under oath from your previous testimony. Very well, Mr. Carr, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Swift, as Judge Lewis said, I did not have the privilege of hearing your uh, testimony in this case. Mr. Carr, it's not my fault you weren't here. No, unfortunately, I could not be present. But I did read the transcript, and it would be quite simple for us to refresh both our memories as to what you said, especially concerning the period when you were separated from your husband. Your Honor, do I have to say all this again? Well, counsel will please try to avoid uh, redundancies. Uh, yes, Your Honor, of course, uh, Mrs. Swift, when you decided to separate from your husband, you also decided to go abroad, is that correct? Yes, I already said that. So you purchased an airline ticket, uh, one ticket to London. It was a one-way ticket, wasn't it? Yes, I explained I purchased a one-way ticket because it was cheaper. I did not have very much money, and I assumed my mother would help pay for the trip back. And, of course, you only needed one ticket because you were not taking your child with you. No, I did not want to subject my baby to the rigors of a, a trip across the ocean. Mm -hmm. So you left your child with... April and Draper Scott, didn't you? Yes. And what uh, did you tell Mr. and Mrs. Scott about your plans at that time? I told them where I was going, and I asked them to take care of my baby while I was gone. In reality, didn't you tell the Scotts that they could keep your boy and raise him as their own son? Your Honor, you said I didn't have to answer the same questions. You can give the same answers, Mrs. Swift. All right. I told them that I was going to London, I told them that I loved my baby very, very much, and would they please take care of him while I was gone for a few weeks. A few weeks, but uh, actually you were gone for several months, weren't you? Yes, and then I came back to get my baby. You came back to get your letter, too, didn't you? I beg your pardon? Well, you left a letter with Mr. and Mrs. Scott, didn't you? That's in the transcript. Yes, I did. I left a letter giving them permission to take care of my baby. Exactly what did you say in that letter? I already told that story. Do I have to keep saying these things over and over again? All right, Mrs. Swift, I'll spare you that trouble. We'll have the court stenographer read your statement, uh, if Your Honor will permit. Yes, permission is granted. Oh, uh, Mr. Frobisch, would you please read that passage? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Nelson, Mrs. Swift, isn't it true that you gave April and Draper Scott a letter of permission to keep your son... Mrs. Swift, I did give them a letter, that's true. Mr. Nelson, what did it say? Mrs. Swift, it merely gave them the right to take care of Jamie during my brief absence. I thought it was proper to give them some kind of authorization. I was a lawyer's wife, you see. Mr. Nelson, isn't this the truth, that the letter said, in effect, that they had the right to keep Jamie forever, 
to raise him as their own child, to adopt him if they wished. Mrs. Swift, that's a lie. Uh, that's, uh, thank you very much, Miss Frobisher, that's enough. Uh, Mrs. Swift, you recall that testimony, don't you? Yes. And you still consider your reply correct? Yes, that's what the letter said. Are you familiar with this, Mrs. Swift? You do recognize this letter, don't you, Mrs. Swift? I'm not sure. Well, it is your handwriting, isn't it? Uh, would you like to read it to make sure? No, I don't have to read it. Then allow me. To whom it may concern, I, Raven Swift, mother of Jameson Swift, do hereby give Mr. and Mrs. Draper Scott full and complete permission to raise my son as their own with complete rights to make any and all decisions on his care, education, and upbringing and to initiate whatever proceedings they deem necessary for legal guardianship or adoption. I declare that I am Jameson Swift's only legal parent and make this statement in full confidence and trust that April and Draper Scott will make ideal parents. And it is signed, Raven Alexander Jameson Swift. This is the letter you left with Mr. and Mrs. Scott in the evening you went to London, isn't it? I don't know. I thought that letter was lost. Oh, yes, you thought it was lost. Which is why you felt completely free to commit perjury in this courtroom. I forgot what was in the letter. It was a long time ago. I, I don't remember. In truth. You attempted to destroy this letter because you remembered its contents only too well. Mrs. Swift, you lied in this courtroom about this letter. You lied about your unfailing devotion to your child. And you lied about your true motivation in wanting him. It's vindictiveness, isn't it? It's an act of pure spite against your husband. And Mrs. Swift, spite has nothing to do with mother love. That is not true. I love my baby. All right, I lied about the letter, but that's because I want my baby. Don't you understand? I have to have my baby. With Comtrex, you may almost forget you have a cold. I know my cold is still there, but thanks to Comtrex, I almost feel like it's gone. I still have a cold, but thanks to Comtrex, I almost don't feel like I do. These are some of the things you can take for a cold. But for one with nasal congestion, aches, sneezing, and coughs, Comtrex Multi-Symptom Cold Reliever does more. It even relieves coughs. So all by itself, it gives more kinds of relief than Dristan or Contac or Bayer. Try Comtrex in tablets, liquid, or capsules. All this fussing over me for a no-nonsense pantyhose commercial. I think they're the best value in pantyhose. But maybe I've talked enough about the sensible reasons for no-nonsense. Terrific-looking legs are just as important. Sure, you get great fit and comfort, even a ventilated cotton-lined panel. Great value for the price. And no-nonsense does beautiful things for my legs. We've, We've noticed. noticed. They've noticed. Get no-nonsense fit, comfort, and terrific-looking legs all at a no-nonsense price. And get noticed. Your Honor, a lie has been told in this courtroom, and we submit it was not just a simple lie, but one which reveals an important truth. The letter we submitted in evidence not only proves that Raven Swift was perfectly willing to give up forever the child she professes to love, but she was also willing to commit perjury in order to achieve her goal. Now, Mrs. Swift contends that the lie was motivated by the desperation of mother love. We submit that it was motivated by the unhealthy emotions of rage, revenge, and vindictiveness. As in all custody matters, the welfare of the child is the primary ingredient, the only real basis for a just decision. We ask you to consider carefully, Your Honor, whether this child will benefit or suffer when he's raised as the instrument of one parent's hatred of the other. I think we all agree that the key ingredient in raising a happy child is love. And it's love that the father, Logan Swift, brings to this court as the sole and powerful argument of his case for custody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. 
Mr. Nelson. Uh, Mr. Rutledge, is there anything further you would like to say at this time? Uh, no, Your Honor, there is not. Very well. This court will now stand in adjournment until such time as I am able to render my decision. The respective attorneys will be notified. All rise. That was terrific. <laughs> it's uh, too bad you didn't get to Elliot Dorn's office a little earlier. Maybe you would have found the letter instead of me. I have not lost yet. So, now you're the one who found the letter after all, huh? Oh, I found the magazine, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Mark, you were marvelous. What an incredible surprise. Oh. I still like to know where the letter came from. You, me, Logan, you and I both saw it fly right off the terrace. You can thank Cliff for finding it, April. Thank well, you, Cliff. Just did a little detective work, that's all. We'll tell you all about it later. Oh. Now it's lunchtime and I'm buying... Ah, uh, no, 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 uh, Draper and I have a better idea. You are all coming up to our house for a celebration. I think a celebration may be premature, April. Uh, the verdict's not in yet. I am willing to accept the invitation anywhere. Yes. I'm willing to celebrate anywhere. <laughs> How can we lose after what happened? Oh, it's so wonderful. I'm so happy. Well, uh, come on, let's get going. <laughs> Mike, it's a shame Nancy wasn't here to see you at this big moment. Yes, she'd be disappointed she couldn't be here. She had to be upstate. Uh, but I think when I tell her, she's going to be very happy what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, good for Logan. He deserves to have some good news. Could you write a television commercial? No. How about for a product you believe in? How about your tie? Yes, it's a reliable product. This is my friend Pam. Our boys love feeding the animals on her neighbor's farm. And I'm going to show Pam how tie cleans that muddy dirt better than her powder. I've used that powder a long time. Look, they've really ground in that muddy dirt. Now we'll take this dirty sock and put it in John's pocket to mark his jeans and wash them in tie. Then we'll take Matt's jeans and wash them in your powder. I can still see mud on these jeans. These are cleaner. Bet they're mine. No, these are the tie pants. <laughs> and even the sock is clean. Maybe I better switch. I'm very loyal to Tide. Women trust Tide. It's the best detergent on American soil. Got a minute? Got a pan? Duncan Hines has got a new idea. Desserts with American Dash. With just one pan, one Duncan Hines mix, no more than three ingredients, and no more than 35 minutes of your time, you can make one of these dark and delicious desserts, like this new chocolate block. Start with Duncan Hines Deluxe 2 Devil's Food Cake Mix and one quart mint chip ice cream. Spread batter into jelly roll pan. Bake for 20 minutes. Cut into squares. Put a slice of ice cream between two slices of cake, add topping, and serve. Wasn't that easy? Tonight's gonna be dark and delicious. This is great. This is terrific. This is delicious. New Duncan Hines desserts with American Dash. And magazines now. Watch him dash through it. Ta-da! What big mugs. Beautiful. I just made them. For our store? Nope, for us. Your coffee's so delicious, now our old mugs aren't big enough. Mrs. Olson, you said Folgers is different. It's a special blend, best I've tasted. Mountain grown. The richest, most aromatic kind of coffee. Your coffee is so good. We might even need bigger mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Try mountain grown Folgers. First offense, neglect of duty, failing to padlock the scene of a crime and thus allowing unauthorized persons to have access. Second offense, giving a civilian a key and allowing him to remove or tamper with possible evidence. How about a third offense, making enemies with Raven Swift? That's got nothing to do with this. It doesn't, huh? I think it has a lot to do with it. She was in the unicorn that night. She was looking for that letter that would help. She was looking for a lost compact. Oh, is that what she told you? Look, I didn't call you any to discuss Raven Swift. We're discussing the unicorn, Chief. Now, I didn't say she was justified in her actions, no matter where she got her key from. All right, let's say she went for a compact. Why didn't she go in daylight? Why did she go when the place was closed up and in total darkness? Why is she sneaking around in the middle of the night? The same thing could be said for Cliff Nelson. All right, that's what I'm saying. They were both there looking for the same thing. A letter? What makes you think there was a letter there? Because you told me. I did? Yeah. When Elliot came to your apartment the night he was killed, he told Raven that he was going to go back to his office and look for a document and see her in court. You think that document was Raven's letter? I do. And so does Cliff. That's why I gave him the key, so he could find something. And after he found Raven running around in Elliot's office, he came up with a pretty frightening theory. You want to hear it? Yeah, I'm listening. Well, if Elliot had the letter, 
Why did he? You tell me. Well, I don't know. Maybe he was a confederate of hers. You know, holding the letter for it. Doesn't make any sense. It seems like the thing should have been destroyed. That's assuming the letter exists in the first place. You know Raven denies that. Oh, of course she would deny it. But I know it's got to exist. So if he's holding the letter, maybe he's holding it because it's a blackmail letter. That's an awful lot of speculation, Deborah. Oh, Chief, it makes so much sense. It explains why Elliot said those things to Raven. It explains why Raven went back to Elliot's office that night. Go on. Uh, I, do, I don't want to. You were going to say that also explains why Elliot Dorn was murdered. Chief, uh, I'm on assignment. I gotta go. See you later. Here's a spectator. I got a lunch date with Joe. And by the way, did she ask you for permission? You're really sore at me, aren't you? Who, me? Well, how could I be sore at a lovable guy like you? I... I guess I came down pretty hard on you this morning. I'm sorry. Okay, Jardy. Why don't you get changed and get ready to go out? Okay. I think I ought to tell you that Calvin Stoner was asking me about you. About me? Why did he ask you about me? Maybe he thought we were buddies. Well, what did he want to know? He asked me about what I thought about your temperament. What'd you tell him? I told him I thought you were a cream puff. That uh, you really didn't have the nerve to kill anybody. Well, it's about time you two had a normal conversation. <laughs> How do you know it was normal? Well, it looked normal enough. I could see you out of the corner of my eye. And with that, I should have been on the mirror. No wonder your timing was off. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Well, here I am. Y yeah, uh, uh, come on in. Um, Martine, this is Jody Travis. Oh, hi. And her friend, Kelly McGrath. Hi. hi. This is Martine Duval. She'll be using the studio for a while. Huh. Well, Jody, you all set? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Listen, Martine, it was nice meeting you, and if you're here in a couple of hours, I'll see you then. Sure. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Bye. Don't feed it too much, huh? Right. Kelly, do you think that's her? Her who? He did call her Martine, didn't he? We knew that's the name he used, yeah. Then it has to be her. The dancer from New York, the one he calls Martini. No wonder why he's been acting so strange lately. The changing room is over here. I know. And well, the record player's over here, and... I know. Uh, you can pick out your own music. Thank you. I, uh, I have to go. I can't hang around. I've got to take care of a couple of business details. That's what happens when you own a dance studio. You become a businessman. Gavin, where is it? Where's what? Where's my, my, my music? I must have removed it. Why? Because I just did. That's why. The, the, the record was getting worn out. It sounded fine to me last time I heard it. Well, it sounded pretty lousy to me last time I heard it. I'm sick of it, Martine. Is that a good enough answer for you? Have fun. Thank you. that trash bag before it's full. If I stuff it, it'll break. Try a bag that's tough enough to overstuff. Hefty? Stuff your bargain bag into the same size hefty bag. Now stuff in more trash. Okay. More? Go on, overstuff it. Hey, you can overstuff them and use fewer bags. And? And save money instead of wasting. Right, two ply hefty. Tough enough to overstuff. This is one of nature's most perfect foods. Nothing has been added to it. 
No sugar, no chemical additives, no preservatives. The flavor and nutrition that grew in it naturally are still there for you to eat and enjoy. It has fiber, low sodium, and no cholesterol. It's a natural whole grain, higher in protein than any other grain. 